hold on this computer. But now I'm recording. Yep. Um, so everybody, welcome to our first UE pairs event of this year. It gives me immense, immense pleasure as the events coordinator to welcome a dear friend of mine and a um, someone who's previously lectured in international relations and human geography and then went on to do something totally different. He won the Eurovision Song Contest. It's Eldar Gazimov from Azerbaijan. He's gonna to talk to us about what he's done in his career and why he decided to go into music from politics. So Eldar, I'll give you the virtual floor. Hello, hello everyone. Hi everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight and pleasure. It's a double pleasure to be your first guest ever. Uh, thank you, Sadie, for inviting me. And once again, thank you for having me, guys. Um, so yeah, it was a long, it, it was a really long story, you know, uh, about my study in Baku Slavic University as an upcoming um, future um, diplomat um, on the subject of international relations and uh, region, uh, region knowing we say here, but you said uh, a different word human, human geography. geography yeah really yeah geography. yeah yeah it's it's quite similar uh you know same subjects uh but since i was a child i always knew that i'm gonna stay on stage one day so no matter what i study and where i am um i knew somehow that uh my life path will uh take me to a place where i am right now uh on stage no matter uh what i'm doing there you know like singing acting um whatever um and i'm just I'm, I'm just here i'm here with you uh if you want to know more about like my international relations uh study it was a long long time ago it was 2006 till 2010 yeah it was my bachelor study and then i entered and did my master uh until 2012 um, even after the Eurovision victory, right? Wow, that I never yeah. knew. That I actually yeah. know. I never knew. I actually never knew that. Even interviewing you previously, because what many people won't from the program won't know, is that Eldar and I are friends through the Eurovision Song Contest, and we've interviewed each other numerous times previously. And even I didn't yeah. know that he went on to study his um, IR bachelor's with masters after winning Eurovision, that might have, must have been quite a um, task being famous and then going back to, what was it like going back to university even after winning Eurovision and being famous in um, Azerbaijan and preparing to host the contest the following year? Well, I was already studying in the uh, master degree. I was doing my master degree while uh, they chose me to represent the country um in Eurovision so uh then when I uh, came back here I had an opportunity to stop my study uh until everything is um quiet again and uh I can proceed with the master and then I was like is there any other options to um because I don't want to stop I don't want to waste my time uh just traveling the world touring and singing songs with having something um on the student table, you know? And they were like, okay, there is an option. There's an opportunity for you to uh, come on a special uh, days when you can uh, have your, um, I don't know, lectures and meet your uh, teachers and then to have your exams and uh, to do your like final work. I don't know, like for to get the diploma. Uh, then I spent half a year uh of writing and my um the, the last work uh the master work uh was negotiated with culture and unesco and how the col international culture is yeah uh what's the impact to uh imp impact of culture into the international relations and azerbaijan itself wow that is yeah. that is really hard considering like you were going through 
like winning the Eurovision and it must have been such a full-on time you, yeah. how did you how did you balance it I I I I, I know our lecturers have just the lecturing jobs how did you manage how did you manage to balance it well I don't know I'm just uh I'm just maybe I'm good I'm at time managing you know my dad always told me uh and he taught me to manage my time correctly so I can uh so I can have so I can have my time to everything for everything you know like study uh, uh, fun um, family friends um, I was reading a lot you know I wasn't I, I didn't go to university um, so much uh, after Eurovision because because all of this travels and uh, touring and a lot of uh, studio work you know um, but uh, I was just, I guess, uh, yeah, the thing that helped me is reading, was reading. Uh, I was reading a lot of books uh, and trying to, trying to be connected to um, students in uh, all my class. And I had a huge, uh, huge help of my international friends who helped me with uh, writing my final work. And, um i can't be grateful enough i would say you also lectured as you said this is never i've told some of our lectures if you also lectured in international relations i know we've got a few um ir scholars among our faculty uh -huh. so what was that like like lecturing in international relations where well, you, you said to me um what well, quote that i remember that you gave me in an interview was um international relations is about representing your country and that is exactly what you did at Eurovision so you sort of took your study your lecturing into yeah. Europe no I wasn't I was uh, no it wasn't it wasn't uh, a real lecture uh, I was giving it was just I was working at the university as a, a member of Azerbaijani German um, center a cultural center and we had students there. I was, um, you know, I had some lectures with them. Uh, I had, I was like a, a Azerbaijani German cultural center uh, reception, I'd say, you know. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I invited people to our classes. I tried to make people uh, be interested in what we're trying to um, improve at our university in Baku. Um, so yeah, that was it. But uh, my study itself, it helped me a lot uh, at Eurovision because um, studying international relations means and means to me uh, is being connected, means to me being connected to a lot of people uh, with different uh, points of view, with different thoughts from different uh, places on earth. And you have to find um, something in common with them, you know? Um, and international relations, uh, they help me, I guess, to find the way uh, to talk to people, uh, to be more confident, to... Um, I don't know, they... Uh, I think my study it freed me up. It freed it freed me to 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 be with people uh, sincere. Um, I guess yeah, that's that's the main point. Yeah, because I know not many people also realize that um, issues obviously do arise in Europe. And what is your take on that? How do you think? But obviously, they say don't mix politics with Eurovision. So obviously, the aim was to unite Europe and not divide it. So what would be your take on that? And what would you think about that, like considering things I, going on every year? Um, I, no, I don't do it neither, you know, it's uh, like, um, but from, from the other point of view, from the other, uh, on the other side, you, there is always a politic, you know, everywhere. 
even um, even when a father and even when parents uh, choose a school for their children or a kindergarten or uh, what people uh, what, what what children uh, should my child uh, be friends with? It's already a politics. It all it's already a politic. It's already something that make people like in. Um, uh, the, the kind of politic that will uh, that will build your future, you know. Uh, that's why I think politic is everywhere, and it's impossible to avoid it somehow. But um, talking about uh, Eurovision correctly, of course, there are some points like uh, neighbor countries uh, voting, and um, I don't know. But uh, I'd stop on that, you know like neighbor countries voting, voting for each other because I don't see any other um, perspective for your for politics and Eurovision. I don't know, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just trying to like myself as a spectator, right? I'm just trying to focus on songs on, uh, and I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to enjoy my evening. Exactly. That's what I say. That's what the EBU wanted to be about at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Also, on your Twitter page, you've been talking a lot about the Nagorno Karabakh conflict, right. which has recently come to a, well, we say a ceasefire end, but we don't know how long that's going to last. One question I do have for you on this, which is quite a, um, Quite a focused question. I know mm. the um, the International Criminal Court have recently opened investigations into both Azerbaijan and Armenia in on like, because of the conflict. Um, and obviously, wow. because of what's been obviously now all the territory is back in Azeri control. Again, what would be your take on something like this? Is a big decision like this? Um, uh, you mean uh, that there's a court? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the UN courts, like because they like recently said that um, they're investigating both countries because of the conflict. Obviously, mm -hmm. they have to investigate. Like Israel and Palestine are being investigated. UK, US, Iraq are being investigated. Right. So also obviously they have to investigate both sides of the con like both like both countries involved. But obviously you, I know you on Twitter you've been you've been like praising your country, you've been praising everybody you've been helping your country. Um yeah. how has it how has it affected your quick? I know you've recently started TV shows and that in um, Azerbaijan, haven't you? So how has that all affected your career? Um, well, it started there that this conflict is, um, it became a part of my life. It became a part of the life of every Azerbaijani. You know, like for 30 years we were living, uh, I was born already almost like in one year after I was born, less than one year. When I was six, uh, six months uh, old, it already started, you know, the open um, conflicts. Uh, armed forces conflicts. It started already there uh, in 19, early 1990. And um, it was kind of, uh, when, I was, when I was studying in a school and in university and from my friends, I read a lot of stories about conflict. I had uh, some friends, uh, still have some friends who were, um, who still are like were refugees uh, from the Garden Karabakh, from Karabakh region. Uh, they're not anymore because um, thanks God the lands are back uh, home. Um, talking about UN uh, investigation, you knew about the you know, four UN resolutions uh, in early 90s after uh, all this conflict um, escalated. Uh, for UN resolutions and uh, every one of them said that uh, we recognize uh, 
uh, Azerbaijani territory, the whole Azerbaijani territory, and Nagorno-Karabakh uh, as a part Karabakh as a part of Azerbaijani territory. So, uh, and they were demanding the armed forces of Armenia to leave uh, the Western Azerbaijan. Um, right now, uh, all I want from this investigation is a fair play. Uh, fairness it is all what my people need. I don't ask, uh, like when people ask me, or because I had a lot of international interviews uh, from that day, uh, all I, all I always said one thing that we don't want anyone, uh, I don't want people to take my, my play, uh, to take my side or Armenia's side or Azerbaijani's side. No, I just want people to hear uh, the truth and find and take what they really uh, think the truth is and take its side. This is very important for me. Um, sometimes when I hear a lot of, uh, like I'm, I'm reading a lot of information um, on Twitter and internet everywhere in the Google, and then I see uh, some news, uh, uh, some, some news that they, they shock me, you know, because I'm living here. I know how it's, how is it in real? And I see how uh, sometimes how the international press uh, or um, uh, people who are under, maybe some, uh, some press is under Armenian uh, forcement, you know, uh, pressure, how they're delivering information to people around the world. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that can't be truth. You know, I can't, that, that, this just can't be truth. Um, so that's why all I want from this situation right now, as you, uh, um, if you ask me is uh, fair play is the correct uh, investigation. And I'm sure that the truth will, it's already here, but true, but, but, uh, it will spread uh, its wings and go all around the world. Well, so, um, the thing we know is, though, that Russia are part of the UN Security Council. And obviously, yeah. more to the pity we know from, from seeing news and from facts that Russia have been backing up Armenia. So do you think that's going to be possible? to ensure fair play if they're one of the five permanent members on the Security Council? Is it going to be possible? It is. Um, because, you know, uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll answer you as an artist, as, a, as someone who, who thinks with the soul, not with the brain. Uh, since I was a child, I always heard a uh, cry of uh, mothers and women and men who lost their families there and um, somehow who were victims of this conflict, you know? Uh, and I never thought that this day could, would come, uh, that I'll be tra traveling to that places, that my, the friends of mine, the refugees, would go to their own homes uh, and build their businesses there. Uh, I'll go uh, do my shows there, but we are already planning it, you know? In 2021, we're already planning it because, and, and, and that's why I am pretty sure, and I believe that um, the thing you've asked is is really possible. It depends on. It's a good game, you know. It it depends on how people will uh, show themselves. Uh, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Russia, United Nations, you know, uh, it's just about fairness. It's just about uh, telling the truth um, and facts. And say so that's all you need in a situation like this. But it, it, as I said to a couple of my lecturers, as I say, who specialize in IR, it really worries me that. Um, because we, when I took IR, because we took an IR module in year one, and obviously the guys who are here would have taken it oh. in year one. It worries me that 
obviously Russia can veto any resolution that comes to them on the UN. So that is one thing that really that can concern me about that. I don't know if it concerns you as well. I'm sure it would. I don't know. I'm still I'm still I'm still thinking this this, this is going to be okay. Uh, maybe that's that, that comes from my belief. This maybe that comes from my uh, trust. Um, but I don't really think, you know, although we have this military, uh, Russian military uh, peacemakers uh, on Nagorno-Karabakh uh, and Turkish military also here, uh, is also here as a peacemaker. So uh, no sides of the, no, no parts of the conflict will escalate again. Um, and after five years, we're expecting that Russian uh, military goes uh, back to Russia uh, because we won't need them here. Um, yeah, the position of our uh, the position, the, the official position, and uh, my own position uh, to that is that we are not uh, making people leave their houses. Uh, uh, we lived with uh, Armenians for I don't know how many years. My parents lived with Armenians. They were they were friends with Armenians uh, back in a day. But uh, for now, the situation is uh, on that point that uh, they are leaving their houses, uh, and we don't want it. If they were born there, if they have children there, if they have families there and the businesses there, they have to stay uh, here on the territory of Azerbaijan and recognize that they are Azerbaijani citizens with um, Azerbaijani green pass identification uh, and uh, to respect rules of, uh, uh, of a country they're living in, as we all do. And that's yes. it, that's, that's, it, it, that's, that's, all, that's all what I want from my uh, co-compatriots. Co yeah, like the, you mentioned the Green Pass, that, is that like the American, like when you go to America, you get like a Green Pass in America? Is that like a similar... No, 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 it's, it's, it's just a color of, uh, of our oh, identification. <laughs> yeah, no, no, on those things, I know in America, like you get a Green Pass, is it, and you go there to work, where you, is it when you go over there to like temporarily to live or work until you get yeah. American citizenship, because my aunt got it. I just didn't know if that was the same thing, but thanks for clearing that up. Um, um. But no, I'm... Um, it really still does concern me, though, that these investigations can take years and years and years. So when do you think we could see the end to this? If it, if it does escalate again, it could, it could put a further hold on it. But do you think it will escalate again, though? Um, no, I hope not. But you always have to be ready, you know? Uh, like every country in the world. Um, I'm, I'm not into conflicts I'm against uh, the armed forces, uh, but you always, you always have to remember who you're dealing with. You always have to remember what people uh, done to you and, uh, you know, um, about talking about all like I'm just I'm just I'm just remembering things. Uh, and on February 20, 26th, we had uh, 29th anniversary of Kojali genocide. It's a massacre uh, that's happened in 1992. And there's always um, a hard point to uh, remember, but I'm always telling that uh, it's an history. It was in the past, but we shouldn't, uh, no matter if we won the game and uh, everything's back and the people can return to their uh, hometowns, homelands, uh, we always have to remember what we've lost and what we went through. Uh, and I'm like, if we, and the, if people will forget about that, one day they'll forget about Hitler and what he did to Jews. And it's important for me.
it's a it's important for I think it should be important for the whole community, you know, um, uh, the whole world. Uh, yeah, totally it's not. Yeah, it, it's not. Uh, it's not that I am angry and uh, I want to I want this conflict to escalate. No, I never wanted uh, a war to start because it's always a loss for every part, for every side of it, to every side of the conflict, you know? It's, uh, uh, it's crying mothers again, it's uh, father's children, fatherless children, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a loss and it's always bad. It's blood and it's always bad. I will always be against that. Um, and at the same time, you always have to be uh, ready and strong enough to, to make people see that you're not uh, giving up on your people, on your country, on your uh, dreams and ideas. This is important. I totally and 100%. I'd say this is the most passionate I've ever heard you speak. And I've interviewed you, what, two, maybe three times now? This is the most passionate mm. I've, ever, I've, I've ever heard you. I've ever, I'm, I'm actually really touched because also, I've never heard you speak it's so passionately. You wanted me to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And I say, I, I am really touched. I say, because uh, I'm, just, I'm just so touched. So the, the guys that are here, do you have any questions um, that you want to put to? Um... I, think some, I think some questions came up uh, to the screen uh, oh, down there, but I couldn't screen. read them. Um, no, someone said, put, uh, someone said, yeah, no, no someone's, someone's I think, I think I said <laughs> now, if anyone's got any um, questions, Put them in the chat box or you can say them now. Um, because I do have one last one. Um, going back to what I said about the ICC, the four main crimes, that my, my lecture is gonna kill me if I get this wrong, is genocide, um, aggression. Um oh, she is gonna crucify me if I get this wrong. Is genocide. Uh, what do you mean? Let me help. You. Like, like there's the four crime, four crimes that the International Criminal Court investigate. And it's um, oh, aggression, okay. oh, aggression, crimes against humanity, genocide, and yeah. there's one other that's escaped my mind that Sarita is going to kill me for if she sees this and I go into class on Friday. And if she sees this before Friday. Yeah, um, yeah so those are, the, those are the four crimes that will end up being looked, those are the four areas that will end up being looked at by... Mm -hmm. The, um, like by the International Criminal Court, the, you know, the court based in The Hague. Um, mm -hmm. But it's obviously they don't prosecute states, they prosecute individuals. So mm -hmm. they'll, be, they'll be prosecuting like members of the armed forces or maybe even members of government and stuff like that. Um, so if it came down to it, like, Obviously, would you support prosecutions of that kind? Uh, you mean people? I just think yeah, get of, indivi of individuals, yeah, of individuals rather than states of, of the states themselves. But uh, from whose side is the persecution? You know, the ICC it'd be it'd be on both sides. So if if. Like obviously people on both sides have been killed, so they could pick up someone from the Armenian side, prosecute them. They could pick up someone from the Azeri side, prosecute them. So obviously both sides, people on all sides have been killed. There's no denying that. Yeah. Um, but it's who, who done the killings. It's what they, is who they prosecute. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it would be, would you support a prosecute a, that description. 
Oh, uh, this is a pretty hard question, I guess. Yeah, because um, it's part of my dissertation. <laughs> so, because I'm like studying the ICC for my dissertation, so needed to get something hard in there. I don't really know how to answer this question because it's it's so hard for me because uh, this is a life of people. And you have to be 100% sure that someone is guilty to persecute. Uh, and um, I don't know, maybe if they would persecute states and not individuals, there would be more. <laughs> Correct. That's the, I think that's the ICJ's job and the UN's job. Because <laughs> I've, I've, yeah. I've been confused about that before and I've, I know I've lost marks in exams because I've been confused about that yeah. before. But say, like, say, like, they could, um, say, prosecute, say, the prime, um, the prime minister of Armenia, say. Um, because mm. when I watched a um, piece on Reuters, they, I mm. didn't know this, they ended up changing some of the town names to make them sound Armenian. I don't know if, yeah. Quarab I don't know if Quarabag was one of them, but they ended up changing all the names to make them sound Armenian. So mm -hmm. that could, I, think that, I think that might be something in terms of aggression that yeah. they look at. So it would be people like that. Um, but with yeah. the support, say, like, if he was up for prosecution, obviously, you, I know I would, but would you support a prosecution of someone like that or a member of the armed forces if it was, like, aggression or... Uh, yeah, maybe I would. Yeah, because, um, as I say, these the trials take years and years. That's what yeah. I mean. They go through pre-trial chambers, um, investigations, yeah. and they take years. Yeah, that's what I mean. Course. The evidence they get is is incredible. But maybe that's all what they wanted the, their their whole lives with doing things with doing crimes they did. Yeah, yeah, totally. Maybe, maybe that's what people deserve, you know, because we're always responsible for uh, our doings mm. and. This, uh, like even even these investigations, you know, for me, sometimes they come so, um, they 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 they're, um, they're so funny, you know, because uh, all this year, all this thirty years, where we're trying to uh, make the whole world community uh, to wake up and to to. Uh, to help the truth to come to come out you know to make people uh live in peace and prosperity together with each other uh as good neighbors but everyone was silent except of some organizations uh with this four resolutions of uh united nations that was it and that was it you know osce um Minsk group it was just it was just silence you know people didn't um react on our uh beggings and or to, on our uh askings to be a part of it so this uh, uh conflict not to be escalated in, uh, again and then uh they all were waiting for 30 for a long 30 years 27 years almost 30 years and uh once again all i want and all i would demand is uh, um, is a right and, and sincere uh, court and investigation, and I want truth to come out. Uh, me as a performer, me as a, as an artist. Um, like everything I have on, on this subject is here 
and here I am. Yeah, it's um, I've written a lot of songs uh, to that theme and um, uh, like there's some sad songs, of course, uh, uh, where I'm where I'm talking about martyrs and, and mothers who lost their uh, children. Uh, and there are some songs of happiness. There's some, some songs of freedom. And, you know, the day, the morning of victory, I have had an interview uh, because I was in the conflict zone when the, uh, in Ganja, this, uh, this is a second huge city in Azerbaijan, which was uh, uh, bombed by, uh, it was civilians who were bombed there. Uh, uh, and I was there, I saw this uh, ruins, I saw people, I, I saw uh, ruined souls of people who lost their children or who lost their uh, parents, families. And um, uh, I, they just wanted to interview me about that because me and Nikki were there. And uh, the subject of the interview changed uh, because uh, this was a day of a victory. At night, it was announced that uh, in next couple of weeks, uh, the regions are coming back to Azerbaijan, coming back home, and everything's okay. Uh, they're signing, you know, three parts of the conflict. Uh, and all I saw, I, I, was, I was so happy on streets. Not, and, and then I um, analyzed myself why I was crying, sitting, sitting in a car and seeing people. So, uh, and it wasn't just because of a victory because we won and everything and, and justice came and uh, truth is already on the, on the surface. But I was happy to see my people so together in happiness. I was happy to see uh, people going to um, uh, we have this uh, uh, graveyard where people uh, are coming to uh, visit their um, relatives uh, laying there. And they were happy, they were crying, and this were, these were uh, te tears of happiness. And I would give everything to see my people so happy once again, because that what brings nations together. And that yeah. what that's what can change the world. I'll say we need more of that at the moment. Yeah. I'll say yeah. we do 100% need more of that. I'd say, I guess your win at Eurovision brought more of that to Azerbaijan, didn't it? What was he? People yeah. flooding in to Baku. It just shone a light, yeah. shone a positive light, yeah. the light that Azerbaijan clearly needed considering what yeah. had been going on for, for what then would have been 20 years. It clearly needed yeah. that. You yeah. you and Nikki yourselves brought the light that Azerbaijan clearly needed. Thank you. So yeah, maybe maybe after maybe maybe after this long 10 years we uh, realize it now that this was the the beginning of a road, you know, because everyone here uh, from his own side, no matter what he's doing, uh, performing or an artist or I don't know, uh, teacher, uh, whoever, um, we were try we are trying to make our own impact, to make our own um, influence, so the whole nation uh, could could be whole again. And this victory, uh, uh, the end of uh, 2020 was so big for every Azerbaijani all around the world and uh, for our uh, supporters everywhere because I become a lot, I, I get a lot of messages in Instagram and uh, Twitter, uh, me messages of support and, uh, uh, that they're sharing our, our our happiness. Yeah, I'm just like, I have goosebumps again. <laughs> oh, because there are many people here should know by now that I'm probably the biggest Eurovision fan in the, in the Tall Street cohorts. 
that yeah. our university has because it has three co it has three year groups of politics and I am probably the biggest Eurovision fan that there is mm. in the in the entire I know people watch it and follow it but not as much as I do so yeah. but it, is, it is good when you can combine the two but in negative circumstances it isn't so much but these things happen <laughs> these things happen I guess but does anyone here want to ask any questions and I shall shut up because I've done too much talking. I want someone else to take over the talking because I talk too We're much. I talk too much. Does anyone else want to answer any questions? Izzy, you're the present. Do you want to ask anything? Izzy, I'm asking you. Yes, yes. I have a question. It's, um, I was just wondering yeah. because, I mean, the conflict lasted so many years and it's happened in so many different stages um and 30 years you're you're 31 that's your entire life and I just wanted to know like what what the conflict and what the war like you had an impact on your on your everyday life because I mean yeah I mean that's definitely something really hard to live through your entire life so oh I don't know, I was living in the conflict, the Cold War, I'd say, like local Cold War, uh, my entire life. And I barely understood what what's like uh, living without conflict. Yeah, of course, we laughed, we cried, we had our birthdays and um, everything is like in the whole world. Uh, but the thing is always on your mind somewhere there inside, very deep, that you are living in a country um, who has uh, which who has a conflict with the neighbor and um, I started to realize uh, the real uh, situation when this whole conflict escalated in the uh, in the end of 2020 I uh, I read I have read a lot of uh, literature in uh, um, in Google and uh, everywhere I could. Uh, I received a lot of letters about that, and um, I knew more about con about this conflict in uh, both countries uh, in these forty four days of war than uh during my entire life um and uh this this is th this was really important for me and for my people i know it 100 percent uh because we're living in a small country and in a country who always needs to uh, develop uh, itself and to uh, make people see that we deserve to be on, a, on the map of the world. Uh, and this was really important for us to show that um, that we can and that we want to be happy too. To, to that we want to be complete. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, it's it makes sense that even though it's obviously a huge part of your your country's history and I mean current history, it's not the only yeah. the only the story the only story of, of Azerbaijan. So, would you like to? Is there anything else you'd like to say that like your you want your country to be known for? I mean, apart from your, your music, obviously. Uh, well, I, well, what I want to say, is, excuse me, uh, how, for what is my country known? Uh, I didn't get your question. Yes, I just wanted to know um, if you'd like to say anything else, because currently in the news, Azerbaijan is currently focused on the conflict. Would you like to say anything else you'd like everyone here to know is... An amazing country. I don't know. Um, 
for there are a lot of things happening. You know, we're, uh, we're we're preparing for next year revision uh, in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. hopefully this year, <laughs> and uh, we have uh, right now uh, it started uh, like uh, celebration of Novruz. We we have here uh, um, Eastern uh, New Year party, let's say, New Year's celebration on 20, uh, 20 21st of m March. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, today is the second uh, Tuesday, uh, like we have four Tuesdays, you know, uh, until the uh, very no rules. Mm -hmm. Today is the second Tuesday and we're celebrating it here. And um, I don't know, a lot of things happening. Um, uh, the mostly coronavirus is uh, mm -hmm. nerving me somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and the number is uh, going up. Um, mm -hmm. So that's it okay. for now. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you for being Thank you for your that. question. I'll, um, I want to know if anyone else has any questions. Anybody else? I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We've talked about Maybe. it. Yeah, hi, um, I just want to say thank you first of all so much for doing this. Um, and my question is, like, how do you, what are your thoughts on the way the news has perceived the conflict? Uh, pardon me? How, what are your thoughts on the way the news has um, spoken about the conflict? Uh, international news, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, there were... Um a lot of news, like most of them, uh, they delivered the right, the correct information and uh, they tried to be um, neutral. Uh, they tried to, um, they interviewed Azerbaijani part, Azerbaijani side and Armenian side and to be, and they tried to be absolutely uh, neutral to make people choose uh, who's right and who's wrong. And that's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. But uh, there were some news, uh, there was some, um, I'd say people uh, who wanted to uh, make this conflict go more escalated. Like uh, there were uh, some journalists from uh, France and from Russia um, who, um, who were uh, doing uh, reportage, um, which, was, which wasn't built on facts, on true facts. Uh, they just... Um, I don't know. That's uh, that. That's what I didn't like. But mostly, uh, the interviewers and journalists who were here, um, uh, they were absolutely correct with that. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Ryan, do you want to ask anything? I think we've talked a lot. Hey, how do I sound? I don't think you sound fine. Hello. Cool. You sound fine. Um, hey, Elder. Thank you for. Being here, it was lovely to listen to you speak. Um, Thank you for having me. Of course. Just leading off the kind of previous questions, I think a lot of news cycles in kind of Western countries are so dominated by domestic issues, um, mm -hmm. and time and time again, these kind of conflicts like with Azerbaijan and Armenia, that the kind of coverage we get over here is really scarce. Um, so I was wondering if people want to become better read on these kind of international issues, how can they do so? Uh, the second part of the question was? How can people in more Western countries um, become better read on kind of international issues? Um, you mean not only uh, Azerbaijani-Armenian conflict, right? Yeah, just in general. But um, if you want to specifically discuss that, I'm sure I'd love to hear it. I don't know. Um... When I was thinking about the conflict and my uh, international friends, uh, like the conflict that we have here and my international friends uh, and how are they interested in that? Uh, and what do they know about that? And I was asking, they were like, okay, that we know that everything is um, worse than now and you're struggling and uh, that's all what we get uh, from our news. Um, I think it depends more on your uh, interests uh and on our diaspora everywhere and lobby and how we 
how Azerbaijani people around the world and our friends are delivering, are, are delivering information. Um, uh, this is very important. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, mostly a conflict like the conflicts like that um, are some sort of, oh my goodness, they are fighting again in the Middle East or they're fighting, fighting again in uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia or uh, south of Russia or anywhere else. Um, and I can't understand people because there are a lot of uh, bad things happening uh, in the whole world and in their own lives and they can come together with everything was happening right in the moment. Um, and you have to be really interested in conflicts like that uh, to be more involved. So what I think is like if, if, if uh, I'm talking about the Azerbaijani side, right? Um, I think that everyone on his own subject has to make it go viral. Me with my music, uh, people who are working with international organizations with uh, their own uh, contacts um, and only facts. Because uh, when you're telling facts, when you're delivering facts, people believe, believe in them just facts. Thank you so much. I think um, you're doing a lot to promote that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. I um, appreciate that. So I've been following Elda for years now, so I know how much um, work he's been. There's a following off the back of Ryan's question. Um, like the monopoly mm. of the news around the world is probably... 75% Rupert Murdoch and 25% just about everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. So with, with most of the world's media being owned by Rupert Murdoch, his outlets would have, a like, have the ultimate decision of what goes on their networks. So like, as I say, I think mainly like Fox News and stuff like that, they wouldn't mm. show stuff like this. So how, yeah. how could you make it, or how would you make it so that networks like Fox News and say ITV here, Channel 4 here, would yeah. show news items like that? Why wouldn't they? It's Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> it's just who he is. He's friends with Donald Trump. Huh. So that's, that says it all. Yeah, I think um, I think there are groups of people who are working on that. Uh, no, let's let, let's take Fox News. You know, let's take uh, what like um, they are analyzing. These groups of people they are analyzing what they're showing, what they're interested in showing, uh, and then. Uh, these groups give the information they need to show uh, to receive the uh, ratings and uh, to be first on board. I don't know, like, it's really, it's really hard, you know. And easy at the same time, because we have this network, we have this, uh, we have internet everywhere, Twitter, hashtags, we can, we can make any hashtag viral, you know, in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, but uh, once again, uh, there are some channels, the TV channels and news channels uh, who are very um, gigantic in that business and uh, many things depend on them, on what they say and um, believing in their uh, fairness is okay but you always have to work hard to make them say truth. Not, not the truth you need, uh, not the truth you need them to say, but the real truth based on facts again. Yeah, if only they could have 
I think we have Ofcom here, but that doesn't always give the results mm. that people need. But the, I think the network that your TV show is on, is that the national um, Aziri network? Yeah. Um, let's, say to, let's say you would get it. We, obviously, we won't be able to get that here, but I'm sure if we searched it up, we would be able to find it. We would be able to watch the news there because we don't get that much international coverage here only if it's something like us iraq iran afghanistan mm -hmm. but obviously nagorno karabakh and obviously i've been doing a lot of research obviously you know i know what's going on crimea as well so they seem to be what mm. i call the forgotten conflict and that shouldn't yeah. be that really shouldn't be the case almost hopefully now they're being investigated by the icc Hopefully something will um, will come of it. Um, but does anybody have any more questions, or are we are we done? No, I think that's it. So thanks, Eldar, for coming to us from in Bristol. We're in Bristol. You're in Baku. So yeah. you're you're what four hours four hours ahead. So we really appreciate you staying up until nearly 10 o'clock at night, your time mm. to speak to us. Um, I'm sure we will keep in contact. So if we need you Definitely. for anything, we will be in um, contact. So we really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, if, if, if you need my comments in, a very, in, in some specific theme, just uh yeah. or subject oh. just let me know uh give me your questions and i'm just mm -hmm. i will try to uh investigate it here uh because i have a lot of friends here who are working uh directly on that uh subject thank you so much Sadie, and uh my new friends uh for this wonderful talk for one hour uh thank you for having me and hopefully hear and see you very very soon again not so